spam. Some people on YouTube say that setting up beta flight is not easy and specifically they say something about RPM filters. Let's see. So this is my mouse cursor and this is where we should try to click. <laughs> it's not moving guys, like I'm trying really hard. You see it's not, oh, it moved a little bit but let me call my motivation expert. Hello, Mr. Nice Success Advisors. What if I try, but I just cannot? Well, you just need to try harder. Yeah, just try harder. You just need to try harder. Let's try again. <laughs> hey, Neil. Hello? I tried very hard, I still cannot do it. Either you try harder, or you just quit like a little pussy. The decision you make is gonna say a lot about you as a person. Make the right one. A little pussy. RPM filters, you are about to get activated for real. What's happening? I guess it's impossible. All right, guys, this video is for beginners of how to set up beta flight very fast, step by step, without unnecessary details. Very quick video, except the two minutes of whatever you just saw. Don't forget to check at the very end how Betaflight should fly on a good drone just on defaults. This is not a build video and this is not a video of how to work with your radio and how to bind. This is only about Betaflight and how to click these little Betaflight buttons. But the components you choose for your drone are affecting on how easy it is to build your drone and set it up and on how good your drone is going to fly. I like to use Foxier 20x20 stack with 60 amp ESC. It's pretty massive, comes conformal coated from the manufacturer, which is very nice. And you don't have to worry about these little plugs because there is a harness, you just plug and ready to go. For video and RC link, I like to use this little 20x20 board. It is immersion RC hybrid board duo with diversity receiver and built-in VTX, which goes up to 350 milliwatts. And it has only four wires coming from here to your flight controller. Four wires, four wires. For DJI HD0 TBS VTX's receivers, doesn't matter. You just need to know where to solder it. And you need to remember which ports you choose to solder it to. So assuming you already built your drone or you bought it from somewhere, assuming you plugged it in safely with a smoke stopper and the flight controller is getting power, you got some beeps from all of the motors, assuming that the receiver get power, that your VTX is getting power, and assuming that receiver LED says that it is bound with your radio. Also assuming you have already set up your aux channels and the switches in your radio, because that's a separate chapter of how to work with OpenTX or HTX. The first step is very important. Take your props off. No props on the drone. No, zero props on the drone. Download Betaflight Configurator. The latest release version is 10.8 as of today, the link is right there. Next, plug your drone with a USB cable. Make sure that this is a data cable, not just charging cable, and make sure you plug it not the DJI Vista, you should plug the flight controller. Battery is unplugged. And then you should be able to see at the very top something like COM10 beta flight. It means that beta flight configurator recognized you plugged in your drone. If this doesn't happen and your operating system decides to meet with you, there are a couple of options right here. Well, first you need to double check that the cable is data cable. Some people also might need to go to options and here select show all serial devices and then like restart your configurator. While you're here in the options, make sure this one is selected, reopen last tap on connect 
and also right here auto connect well this is just comfortable the next step is very important especially if you just get your flight controller or your drone and uh, you want to save your current configuration for just in case before flashing it so click connect click presets click save backup and save your current configuration somewhere most likely you won't need it but maybe you will then click update firmware flashing in beta flight 4.3 and 10.8 became so easy you just click auto detect button and it automatically detects which flight controller you plugged in then here you just select the latest uh, release version click load firmware online and click flash firmware and then you wait i don't know like a minute some flight controllers sometimes tend to give you problems and don't want to flash in this case you unplug the usb cable press the button on the flight controller while pressing that button you plug the usb cable and then you should be able to to see dfu mode here and then you need to select no reboot sequence and then you you can flash in very rare cases the button doesn't help and then you can try impulse rc driver fixer it not just installs drivers for your flight controller but also sends your flight controller into dfu mode after flashing click connect and then this is very important you have to apply custom defaults because if you don't pack your bags here it gives you a couple of warnings you can read through them but don't worry, we're gonna fix all them. So here, just click close. Now let's work through the tabs from top to bottom. And don't worry, you don't need even a half of them to get your drone in the air and have some fun. And most likely you don't even see all of them because right here in the options, you didn't activate permanently enable expert mode. But don't worry, most likely you don't need it. Now open setup and here you will see a 3D picture of your drone that sort of repeats the same movements as you're doing with your real drone and you need to make absolutely sure that they are matching here this reset z axis button helps you to align your drone with your real drone and tilt it all the way left right front back yo absolutely make sure that the movements are matching with the 3d picture and if they don't match, it means you mounted your flight controller in the weird way and you either can fix it physically or you open configuration tab and then just, you know, input here the degrees of how you mounted your flight controller relative to your drone. This is a little bit tricky. I usually just guess. No, like, actually, I usually just don't even do that because I, mounted, I mount my flight controller correctly. You know, Fox here, stack and everything is, is cool. But if you have to deal with that, you know, sort of try to guess it, you know, usually it's like your 90 degrees or 180 degrees, put it here and then click save and reboot, go to setup and then, you know, check these movements again. And if, and if it doesn't work, then again, open configuration and try different numbers. When everything here works correctly, just click, uh, put your drone flat on the table and click calibrate accelerometer and give it a couple of seconds. But we really don't need accelerometer because we're cool kids, we're gonna fly Acro. Then move to the ports tab. It's probably the most confusing tab, but it is actually pretty simple, especially if you remember where did you solder all your peripherals to the flight controller. I am very lucky that I used Ghost system and all I need right here, Serial RX UART 4, because I remember I soldered it to UART 4. If you're using DJI, you might need to activate configuration MSP, somewhere here to, on the port you you actually solder dji to if you just build your drone and you you want to get it into the air as soon as possible just forget about all these camera controls smart audio tram just forget about that the worst case scenario you can just click couple of buttons on the vtx make sure it's on like an appropriate power use the vtx user manual and you are good if you are a more advanced user and for some reason you're using TBS Smart Audio VTX for some reason without connecting with Crossfire or Tracer or you're using Tramp without using like a Ghost subsystem uh, for some weird reason then you know you might need to mess with this but if you're a little bit more advanced you really don't need to watch this video get out of here don't forget to click save and reboot and moving to configuration tab here you need to set up your pit loop frequency correctly and uh, you can see I have a BMI gyro which doesn't allow me to go more than 3.2 kilohertz and then PID loop also just set it to maximum 3.2 kilohertz. 
Now, if you're running F7 flight controller with MPU gyro, then you will be allowed to set 8K and then just set 8K. You know, the more the better. Not really, but yeah, set 8K if you're on F7 flight controller. And if you don't know which flight controller you're on, right here, you see for me it says F7. Sometimes it says F4, and for F4 flight controllers, don't go higher than 4K. Just don't. Then deactivate accelerometer, barometer, magnetometer, because, you know, you remember, we're cool kids, we're flying acro, and we don't need all that. If you still want to have accelerometer for these automatic angle holding modes, then you might need to set up this maximum R angle degrees to 180 degrees. You need that if you have accelerometer and you want to be able to arm your drone if you stuck somewhere up on the tree and you want to shake it off. Otherwise, if your drone is like upside down and you disarm, then you won't even able to rearm it. This is sort of a safety feature, but you know. Then right here in features, make sure the air mode is selected and OSD is selected. If you want your drone to be like a shiny little star, then you can activate LED strip if you have it. Then there's GPS, but we don't use that, of course. This is pretty handy. We can make your quad beeping with the motors if it fail saves or if you choose to activate the beeper with a switch. A little bit below settings for the real beeper, but I usually don't use it. If you do, you can deactivate some of the beeping because it gets annoying. And don't forget to click save and reboot. The next one, power and battery. And you need to plug the battery into your drone. And remember, no props. Before you do that, if your video transmitter tends to overheat, just temporarily unplug it. Now we are going to calibrate the voltage meter and to do that you need to know the actual voltage on your battery. You can use these um, little things, they're not very precise. You can also use the um, multimeter if you know how to use it or you can just plug your battery into the charger and see what's the voltage. Once you figure out the real voltage on your battery, you click calibration and put the measured voltage right here. For me it's uh, 23.7 and then you click calibrate apply calibration and then click save after that you will see that the measured beta flight voltage will become close to the real voltage you just measured now fail safe tab i think most of people should just leave it at defaults especially beginners in this case if your radio disconnects with your drone it will just stop the motors and fall out of the sky it might sound a little bit unsafe, but believe me, it is not. First of all, you shouldn't fly above people or property that you can hurt or damage. And you shouldn't fly above yourself, especially if you're a beginner. It might sound really cool that when you lose control with a drone or something happens, you just like flick the switch and the drone returns to home automatically. It is possible to do. But especially if you're a beginner, it is really unsafe if your drone keeps spinning props when you lose control with the radio. Because if you are a beginner, who knows if you set up GPS correctly, if it works correctly, if you set up failsafe correctly. And if you don't, your drone can fly away and drone without control can cover huge distances in a matter of like half minute. And who knows where it ended up, but by default your drone will just drop. And remember, because you don't fly over people and over like someone's property, then it will just uh, fall in the grass and you know, maybe you'll need to replace a motor. Not a big deal, right? Maybe it's a big deal, but it's way better than if your drone flying away somewhere and you cannot even control and disarm it and then it crashes somewhere. Like, this is actually pretty scary. And another important story. If you fly and you're a beginner, sometimes you might lose, like, orientation of your drone or, like, where to go or how to come back. The moment you feel that, you should just disarm. Don't try to like fix it, because usually when you try to fix it, your drone just flies somewhere, who knows where. So you need to just let your drone drop immediately when this happens. And that's why, again, you don't fly over yourself, you don't fly over people. The moment you feel sort of danger, just disarm, let it drop in the grass. It's way better than losing your drone like half mile away. And if you already found yourself up high somewhere and you don't know how to come back and you don't know where you are, that's already too late. 
you need to do preventive disarming before this happens, before you start flying somewhere. And you shouldn't worry about crashing your drone into the grass, because you're gonna do it either way. But you should concern about your drone not flying somewhere where you don't want it to fly. And of course, practice acro mode in simulator, that will save you some real money. Velocity drone. So fail safe tab, if you are beginner, just leave everything as is. Preset tab. Skip. How crazy is that? Yeah, we're skipping presets. If your drone is like a regular 5 inch drone and you're not running some crazy RC link update rates, you're really good to fly defaults. You should be good to fly defaults. And if you don't, then something might be wrong with your quad. But in most cases, for most of people, 5 inch quads defaults just should be good. You know, like 85% of performance. PID tuning tab. Skipping. You might want to set your rates, but if you're just starting, I, for example, just fly default rates and I can race, I can freestyle, I can do some like building dives, whatever, default rates, they're just good. Receiver tab. Here you just need to select correct protocol for your radio control receiver. I fly Ghost, so I select serial control and then here Ghost. And if you fly Crossfire, then you select Crossfire. Express LRS, you also select Crossfire, but you can see there are a bunch of protocols, Spectrum, depending on like which radio you have and which module you have at the back of your radio. After you click Save and Reboot, you should be able to see your sticks are moving here, and if you don't, you probably selected wrong protocol or wrong port, or you didn't bind your receiver, or you didn't solder it correctly, so go back to the previous steps and double check everything. It's also possible that you just need to plug in your battery if you unplug it on the previous steps, to power up your receiver, because sometimes receiver is not powered up when you only plug in USB. Then you need to check the order of your main channels, that throttle is throttle, yo is yo, pitch is pitch, and roll is roll. And if they don't match, then you need to change the order of these letters right here, A, E, T, R. You see they are matching here, A, E, T, R. You can just like change them here and then click save and see if it helps. Also make sure that your main channels are going from 1000 to 2000. It could be plus minus couple of points, but if they don't do that, you need to adjust it in your radio. Of course here, please check that your aux channels are working, like the arming, the beeper, the troll mode, whatever you want to set up later. And if they don't work, you need to open menu in your radio and fix it there. This is a different story. Now mode stop, and this is how you tell your drone which aux channel and switch you want to use for arming. So click add range and just move the switch and it will automatically detect the aux channel. And then move this yellow thing at the position where you want your drone to be armed. So like this disarmed and like this is armed. If you click save and try to arm it, remember props off. It won't arm because first we didn't set up motor protocol and second the drone automatically detects that it is connected with USB and that's the safety feature of not arming. In a similar way here you can set up a beeper. If you want to set up turtle mode you need to come back to this tab later because we didn't assign motor protocol yet. So remember later just come back here if you want turtle mode. And you probably need turtle mode so. Then skip adjustments tab, then skip sensor tab. I don't even know what's that. Well, I know, but we don't need that. And open motor stuff. Here, I recommend you to use motor direction is reversed. It could be a big debate here, but this is my channel. And this is how I run all my drones. This is not actually changing the motor direction. You see, it only changes the picture here. And this is how you tell your flight controller that your intention of how you want the motors to spin but you need to make sure they're spinning this way by yourself. Then scroll a little bit down. And here you need to select ESC motor protocol. Most of the modern ESCs, BLHeli S, BLHeli 32, AM32, they all support D-Shot. But if your ESC is pretty old and does not support D-Shot, then selecting D-Shot is pretty dangerous and can spin your motors right away because it's an old ESC and it will think you will give it crazy signals. If your PID loop frequency from configuration tab, you remember, if it's 4K or lower than here, you need to select D-Shot 300. You can leave it like that, but if your PID loop is 8K, then you can be a little bit more extra fancy and select D-Shot 600. 
My flight controller is BMI gyro, it means the PID loop is 3.2k and then I just go to DSHOT 300. Then I highly recommend you to use bidirectional DSHOT. It enables fancy RPM filters, you don't need to set them up, they just work. Here it prompts you that it's gonna change some internal settings, you just agree. That's it. Most of the motors, especially 5 inch, they all have 14 magnets on the bell. But some motors, depending on the size, they might have different amount of magnets on the bell and then you just need to count it and put this number right here, motor poles. This is important. Don't mess it up, so count twice. Well, or just check the motor description on the website. After save and reboot, if your battery is unplugged, here you will see red errors. And this is fine, just plug your battery in, props off, remember, no props. And then click this, I understand the risk, and try to spin your motors. You see, errors became zero, and then you can spin your motors a little bit. If you still see red errors here for all the motors, then your ESC is probably not supporting bidirectional D-Shot and then you just need to update the firmware on your ESC. It is very easy to do on BLHeli S ESCs and even more easy to do on BLHeli 32 ESCs. There is zero excuses in 21st century for not running bidirectional D-Shot and RPM filters. Zero excuses for that. But if you still don't want to mess with ESC firmware and keep flying the very, very old firmware, then you can just disable bidirectional D shot and it will fly just fine. Then you need to check the motor order that this is motor one, this is motor two, and then they are all matching with the motors on your drone. And for that, you need to open CLI tab. I'm oh, just kidding. There is a pretty handy dialog for that reorder motors, but it's so easy to use. Make sure props are off. Battery is plugged in, then you start and then you just follow directions and click on the motors that are spinning. This motor is spinning, now this motor is spinning, now this motor is spinning and now this motor is spinning and then save. Now you need to make sure that the motor direction spinning is correct for all the motors. Again, make sure you don't have props on your drone. Click motor direction, click understand the risk, of course your battery should be plugged in. Then you can go wizard, start spinning motors and then you like feeling if any motor is spinning in the wrong direction, not following the diagram, and then you click on the index of this motor, let's say this one and this one, and it changes the direction of these motors, then you just stop them, and you're good to go. As of today, for Betaflight 430, there is a very rare bug, but it's pretty scary that like one out of hundred times it will spin motors like crazy in this motor direction dialog, but it's very rarely and when it happens, you know, you just need to unplug your drone and plug it back and um, do it again. But that's why one of the reasons you need to have your props off. And I believe for Betaflight 431 it will be fixed. But even in 431 you still have to have your props off. No props on the drone. The next one is OSD. And you know, this is your own art. I think the minimum you want to have here is warnings and also the battery voltage. Just put it somewhere, I don't know, somewhere in a visible place and you're good to go. Of course you want to add way more things here, but don't overload it, because it, it doesn't look cool. And when I say you're good to go now, then you are good to go, but let's check your quad first. And this is how you can check your drone without damaging propellers and without scaring yourself. Just arm it without propellers on the table. Don't give throttle, but just move your a little bit and your drone should follow your a little bit. If your quadcopter doesn't want to arm, then you can open CLI tab and type status. And here you'll be able to see why your drone is not arming. And then you can roll a little bit left and right. Of course the drone will not roll like it yours, but you can feel the air moving faster next to some of the motors. For example, when I roll to the left, then these motors are spinning a little bit faster and feel it with the second hand that the air here is moving faster when I roll to the left. And when I roll to the right, then these motors are spinning a little bit faster. You can even actually hear that. And the same for pitch, when I pitch forward, then the rear motors should spin a little bit faster. And when I pitch back, then front motors should spin a little bit faster. Also, you can give a little bit of throttle and see if the drone freaks out. Everything seems to be fine. 
and the motors ramping up a little bit, like this, slowly, this is totally fine. You would have a problem if the drone starts doing something like this, like brr, 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 and then disarms. Final and the most important step is the failsafe check. Arm your drone, give it a little bit of throttle, and then power off your radio. The drone must stop the motors in a matter of couple of seconds. But if your drone keeps spinning the motors even when your radio is off, you absolutely have to fix it. And it's probably somewhere in the radio settings or somewhere in the module settings where it says something about failsafe settings. But you absolutely should not fly until you fix it. Hey, I know you forgot about turtle mode, so open mode stub, find flip over after crash, add range, and uh, flick the switch for turtle mode you want to use and set it up. Save. Now it is time to put props on. And remember, there are clockwise propellers and there are counterclockwise propellers. So when you put them on, you must follow this little diagram. Now you are ready for your first test. Of course, it's always worth to have a little bit of practice in simulators some hours. But remember, safety first. You need your fingers. Don't test it at home unless it's a tiny whoop. Find a safe spot outside, follow local regulations, don't fly over people. You're doing it at your own risk and you will have loads of fun. And this is it for beginners. Minimum you need to know about Betaflight to get your quadcopter in the air. And yes, freaking defaults. They are good for majority of people out there, especially with the 5 inch drones. And this is me right here flying defaults on this drone with GoPro 7 Hyper Smooth Off. Tell me if you like it. And as always, see you in the next video, if I'm not lazy.